A key element to starting recovery is being able to evaluate how hopeful you are in your belief, or rather your belief that you can recover. When I was diagnosed, I was given not a good prognosis. Um, there was, I was told that there was no recovery, there was no treatment, and uh, there was nothing that I could do and that seizures would always be a part of my life. The only thing I could do is find a stress-free environment to uh, try to decrease the number of seizures. Well, that doesn't exist, <laughs> so you got to find a new way. But I definitely felt the impact of that hopelessness. And I'm a bit of a stubborn person, and that, that really benefited me in this experience because I was not willing to accept, I outright refused to accept that prognosis. I decided that just because there wasn't an answer yet didn't mean that there wasn't an answer. Just because one person or all the voices that I had heard on PNES, um, on YouTube or different articles, I didn't find the hope that I'm really um, aspiring to put out there. But I found that hope in myself. And I found that hope by, again, by refusing to accept defeat. I was not going to go down this way. I was not going to lose years of my life experiencing life. So the next step is to figure out how. If you are at the point and you're not quite sure if you have hope or not, ask yourself this. Do you come up with reasons why different methods of treatment wouldn't work for you? For instance, are you resistant to trying new forms of, um, of mitigating your PNES? Have you been told that something is helpful for one person and decided that's not really for me? Or have you said, yeah, they might have recovered, but I know that I just can't get a handle on it. Are you looking at the past and creating an argument for not recovering based off the fact you just haven't done it yet? Do you use statements always and never? Those are very powerful words because they don't exist too often in reality. Always and never. There are exceptions to almost everything. That was powerful for me. I recognized... Um, what would happen to my state of mind when I use the words always and never regarding negative events. This person never does this for me or this, I always have this kind of outcome. That's not beneficial to me. So I became aware and when I said those words, it was almost like um, I had created an auto response to those words that when I said it, I was like, whoa, wait, what did I just say? I was just watching what I was saying more carefully because what we say develops our state of mind. And another, um, another thing that I started doing is watching how often I would say the word but and if it was being used properly. Yeah, I mean, think about it. Whatever you say, if you use the word but after it, it negates what's just been said. So if you say to somebody, I love you, but I really can't stand when you do X, Y, or Z. So you're basically putting a condition on your love. Or you could say, I believe that I can recover, but I just, I don't think that it's going to be easy. Well, it's not going to be easy. It doesn't mean that recovery is impossible. So instead of using the word but, I use the word and. I really want to recover and I think it's going to be really difficult. Those two statements are true and I haven't negated one with the other or by using that word. Of course, the word but has its place <laughs> in its accuracy. Um, the point is to recognize how we're using it and how we feel about our statements. 
if we're not watching the image, I mean, the um, message that we're putting out, you know, the, there's a lot about theory of thought. And I've done a fair amount of reading up on a lot of different topics because I'm, I'm a very curious person by nature. And uh, uh, topics have just presented themselves within my research with PNES and trauma recovery, um, awareness, being able to stay in the moment. There's just, there's so many interesting topics out there that really develop new pathways in your brain, new mapping of how to process information. And being able to process information in a new way is key in recovery. We need to learn how to take stressful situations and process them so that the outcome is not uh, a seizure. So evaluate your level of hope. See if you believe and then just find reasons why you can recover. Even if you have to force it, there is an element of faking it till you make it. Mind over matter is a powerful thing. And one of the things that really helped me was to imagine what my life was going to be like when the seizure stopped, what I could do when the seizure stopped. That propelled me towards positive thinking. Being able to envision the life I wanted gave me that extra oomph as far as motivation goes in getting to where I needed to go. So think right now, how hopeful are you? And consider whether or not you think that it's important to have hope if, uh, in regards to recovery. If you're not sure, do a little bit of reading on it. Talk to somebody. Talk to people who have overcome great things and ask them how, hope, how important hope was in their journey.